Hi, my name is Jason LaRue, and the mathematician I will be discussing today is Mary Somerville, a writer in science and mathematics. Originally named Mary Fairfax, she was born in Scotland on December 26, 1780. Mary grew up in a time where many women weren't supposed to learn things, so her mother taught her how to read but not to write. Um, she read everything that she could get her hands on, but she was never really satisfied. When she was about 10, she went to a boarding school, but she wasn't there for very long. And according to her journals, it was a horrible experience. <clears throat> she often would stay with her uncle, who had pity on her, not being able to learn. He eventually did teach her how to read Latin. When she was 15, she was reading a women's magazine, and she came across some writing that turned out to be algebra. With the help of her little brother's tutor, she was able to get a copy of Euclid's Elements of Geometry. In 1804, she was forced into a marriage with her cousin, Samuel Grieg. He was a Russian Navy captain. He didn't prevent her from continuing to study, but he greatly disapproved of it, and she felt like she couldn't really continue with her studies. Once Samuel died in 1807, she felt much freer to continue her pursuits in both math and science. Um, by this time, she did have two children, but she still continued to study. Um, she also had many friends at this time, and they helped her and encouraged her in her studies. She eventually started a correspondence with William Wallace, a professor of mathematics at the Royal Military College. They discussed many problems from the work Mathematical Repository. She received a silver medal for her solution to one of these problems. In 1812, she married another cousin, William Somerville, who worked in medicine. He started working as an inspector of hospitals and eventually became a doctor. He took great pride in her accomplishments and her work, and he wanted to help continue her studies, and he actually would sometimes read some of her books that she wrote because she wasn't allowed to read them in public herself. Uh, the Somervilles often visited Charles Babbage, who showed them the mechanical calculators that he was working on. As I briefly mentioned before, Somerville was a writer in science and math. Her many works actually became the backbone of Cambridge University's first science curriculum. Her writings made it easier for any educated person to understand math without being like a specific mathematician. She wrote about chemistry, physics, astronomy, um, like pretty much all of the sciences. In 1827, she was in her 50s, 60s maybe. Um, she was commissioned to translate a work by a man named Laplace. Um, her version of his book um, was then titled Mechanism of the Heavens, and it went far beyond just translation. It was actually too long at first, and the person who commissioned her to translate it didn't want to publish it because he thought it was too confusing. But another mathematician, Herschel, um, loved the work and felt like it needed to be published. She often used her own words that would make it easier for everybody to understand and added a lot of her own proofs uh, to the math part. The book itself was a lot about mathematics, um, about how planets move and the movement of the moon. One of her other more notable works is on the connection of the physical sciences, which discussed astronomy, physics, geography, and meteorology. Somerville was one of the first two women um, admitted to the Royal Astronomical Society. The term scientist was actually first used to describe her, which is pretty cool. Um, many people of her day were called men of science, which wasn't really seen as fitting because she's a woman. And along with that, many scientists at the time were called like whatever specific field they were in, so like astrologist or geologist. But Mary studied across many different scientific and mathematical fields, so none of them really fit her. So the man who created this term felt like he needed another specific thing just for her, and he 
also loved the way that women worked because he felt like only women at this time were going across multiple fields of study. Upon her death, uh, Mary was dubbed the queen of 19th century science.